was um, somebody said that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't say his name, oh, no, no, please. Oh, Victor Spinetta. Oh, thank you. Would Victor Spinetta's lawyers please contact oh, he's mine? <laughs> yes, is of course he? he is. I don't think he, but he was on the, everybody's favourite list. Magazine magazine the other day. That's what we were watching. <laughs> he's on ever since you lost, isn't it? Mm, I think it's about the second time or third, the third time or fourth time yeah. he's been on. I feel. Yeah. Anyway, so that was that. Steve, what's been happening in the wild and wacky world of pop and <clears> show <throat> business this week? Well, this week. Um, news broke of Madonna's split with Warren Beatty. No, I missed that. Oh, really? God, really? Is there any romance left in the world? Why are they you? split up? I thought they were made for each other. He's been playing around. Oh, God. So she's gone Men. back. She's got. Men. <laughs> Who would have them? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Do I sense some bitterness amongst you girls at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's been playing around and. She's gone back to Jelly Bean. You know, can I just say something about Warren Beatty? If he's listening... Can say anything. <laughs> what? Your phone number? <laughs> well, no. Warren Beatty, one of these days you're going to wake up and you're going to be old and you're going to be ugly, you're going to have lost your sex pill and no women will want you. Well, that's one of the reasons that she was going off him. Apart from the fact that he went off, he lost his sex pills. No, his sex pills? You know, apparently he's not as, um... What they really? make out, girls. Really? Yes, he's mm. a sex god and a love horse. Well, it'll take a woman like you to prove it, because Madonna's given up. She's oh, put really? her hands up. Well, th this is true. <coughs> One day, Warren is going to discover that he's not as beautiful as he thinks he is, or that he was. Because he's, he's getting on a bit now. He's about 52, isn't he? He is, I think. Probably older. Probably much older. I think Paul wants to ejaculate. Paul, can we... Paul? He was, he was just looking very observant and kind of, he was staring at no, it. it's okay, I was just turning you up, actually. You were turning were me turning up? turning you up, yes. Really? I like to fiddle with your knobs occasionally. I know you do, Paul. You were a major technician as well as a major broadcaster of the highest order. Thank you so much. You I'm sorry welcome. for interrupting. It's okay, go away now. It's Thank okay, you. Rusty Richard. Rusty Richard? We know who he is now. Rusty I exposed Richard. him last week, didn't I? He's in the Sunday sports oh, under Rusty right. Richard. That's right. This is the truth. But also, last week, I said to some the people out there, the three that were listening, I said, could anybody that knows details when Madonna is gigging to contact me? Did anybody contact me? No. <laughs> so I've had to try and find out myself. <laughs> but the thing is, the, rele uh, the da dates that she will release, the tour dates that when she... Oh, what am I trying to say? She'll release the dates soon, in oh, the next right. two weeks. Okay. Thank you. But she's just stunned her friends by naming her video company Slut Co. Good for Madonna. I Good like Madonna. Madonna, I do. Want any more? Yes, please. Ever wondered what happened to Kevin Rowland? Yes, I have, frequently. What, what have you been thinking? I've been thinking, I wonder what Where ever happened to <laughs> Kevin Rowland. Is he still wearing dungarees? Does he still have a berry on his head? Has he had a shave yet? Yes, yes. Well, he yes, went through the actually. kind of Al Pacino look, didn't he? He started wearing sharp suits. Well, he's still stuff. doing that. And he's going to be on. Oh, hold on. What is he still doing? Is he... He's wearing sharp suits. Oh, right. He's had a shave and his hair's greased back. Hmm. And he's looking like a love horse, as you would say, Samantha. Oh, I don't think Kevin Rowland could ever look like a love horse. But the thing is, he's going to be on Adamant's new album, which yeah. is released this week. No, oh, I think right. Adamant's a love horse. And he's, he's going to be doing a duet with him. Is he? Probably won't be a lover's duet, but it's going to be a duet. Oh, that's anyway. nice. Paul, what did you just say while we were talking <coughs> to my little ear? <coughs> nothing. He said absolutely nothing. Fine. OK, then. And this is especially for our listeners in Manchester. All two of them. No, we have I'm several sure, I'm listeners sure we have in several. Manchester. Um, Prince has announced more dates to his tour. Are you going to get me free tickets, Steve? Yes. Good. And yes. me. And me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, you could, have told, I asked you could first. have told me last year something. Anyway, year. <laughs> his shows are going to be at Manchester's City Main Road Ground on August the 2nd. Would you like to know how much the tickets cost? Yes, why not for our listeners in Manchester? £18.50. Wow, what well, a bargain. There you, go. there you go, and what more can I say? Is this King next, Paul? No, is this Erasure next? Hurrah for that. This is Erasure and Olamor. The wonderful Erasure and Olamor. Well, Mandy, why I've are you just, sitting there rubbing a ring on your I've eye? I've just tickled Mandy. No, <laughs> no, not because I'm rubbing a ring on my eye. I've got this horrendous fear of a sty. I think I'm getting a sty on my eye. It's not the end of the world, man. I, it is, it is. I remember having one a long, long time ago and I was extremely run down. It does bring you down, though. And um, that was the reason for getting styles, isn't yeah. it? And I've got this little red mark just by my eye and I'm scared stiff that it's going to be a, um, a style. And Steve says, 
I know how you get rid of that, Mandy. Rub a gold ring on it. It's an old Irish so superstition. I, thought, I think it probably and it's always is. worked for me. Oh, has it? Well, I'll probably go green, man. How long have I got to do it for, no, though? The best thing to do, though, is you're supposed to go up to like somebody and say, could I borrow some gold off you? I want to rub it on my... Never give the gold back. <laughs> if your star doesn't um, go away, you turn out to be a rich woman. And I know, Paul, I just kicked the table. I was crossing my legs. It's OK, Sorry. you can kick it now because the microphone's been moved away from it, so it's OK. Um, somebody out there in a hat. I wonder who it is. I'm dying for him to turn you don't around. Like I think hats, it's Mark you? Jones. It's Mark, jo it's Mark, Mark Jones! Jones I know that man in the back. What a freaky thing that is. <laughs> Mark Jones has produced enough hormones to grow a beard. I am impressed. Mark Jones from Radio WM Heartlands, who's a king amongst several people, at least four. Um, right, what was I saying? So that is the competition. What band was it? He looks like he one came of, here on Harley Davidson. He's one of grown his Ron vicious GMC. beard. And he's wearing a baseball cap, I think. Yes. Suits you, Mark. <laughs> Enough said. Enough said. Right, so, if you think you know the answer to the competition, what made you new room? Why are you <laughs> sniggering at me, Stephen? Your headphones are sliding over your face. <laughs> I think that Sorry. may be a good thing for those sitting opposite me. Right, so, what was the competition again? Yes, a cover version of You've Lost That Loving Feeling was on the um, A New Romantic Dance. Why did these com competitions get so convoluted? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I could put it simply. What New Romantic Band had a cover version of You've Lost That Loving Feeling on one of their early albums? If you think you know and you'd like to win yourself a selection of major prizes, if you have a dedication, shall we read a de dedication? Hello to Dominic and Jamie, brothers of Nathan. Could you please sing the worm song again so that he can record it and send it <gasps> and send in a disc of it? That was from Nathan in St from Stonnell. Stonnell? <laughs> and I can't think of any more dedications that people have found it. Anyway, if you have the London Ian Wood. Hi Ian. Hi Samantha, how are you? All right, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. How is it in the big city tonight? Um, very dark, very warm and very pleasant. Really? Right. That's nice. I came here without my regulation BBC Radio in the Midlands trench coat. So oh, good. It's very, very balmy Sunday, summer's evening down here. I think the whole of London is breathing a sigh of relief that you're not wearing your trench coat, Ian. <laughs> we certainly are here. Well, there's a great big tear across the back anyway where I've been... Stabbed. Oh dear, that's <laughs> nice, is, this? is this something you'd like to tell us, Ian? Oh, no, no, just, just the, the trials and tribulations of trying to use the underground. And, and of being a major showbiz personality that's and a love well, horse. Uh, I know. How are you, dear? After... I'm fine. Basking uh, in the limelight down here of being London's number one newsreader. Really? I mean, it must I be know. difficult to live with, actually, Ian. I am. I'm getting enorm even more than usual, I think. Why is Mandy giggling? She stuff? wants a knife back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ian. <laughs> Ignore him, dear. Oh, I just don't like the thought of you being stabbed. No, uh, it's okay. I'll do my best to ignore Steve Dior. It's very difficult, though. It's quick. It is difficult. Still getting not many men can ignore me, Ian. Sorry? <laughs> Not, not many people can ignore me. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I wasn't listening to what you were saying then. <laughs> Ian, what was I going to say? Thank Ooh, you for being Cassie. such a hero last week. Hmm? Thank you for being such a hero last week. Oh, that's all right. Have, have you uh, recounted the tale to the good people of the Midlands? Yes, I have told them. Ian would bless him. I said, uh, he, he came round, I said, he said, and I was like all dressed up in my hat and my coat and whatever, <laughs> and he said, Samantha, are you going out? I said, yes, we're straight to Dudley Road Hospital. And he drove me there really quickly. <laughs> well, not really he, he went via Milton Keynes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you anyway, Ian. That's all right. There was really no need to wait, you know. Oh. I would have understood. It's OK. I couldn't have stood you up, Ian. Anyway, listen, mate. What's been happening in the newspapers today? OK, a right old mixed bag, but fairly entertaining one way and another. We learned, for example, in this week's Times of the uh, relative personal stock. Um, You're crackling ever such a lot, Ian. Do you I? know that? Are you, are you wearing one of your... Visco sweaters this evening. No, no, I've got my uh, dark green shirt on, my uh, trousers. Um, I thought I'd leave my matching uh, uh, two-tone dress suit and handbag and accessories home this evening. Well, that's good. It attracts strange looks on the underground. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, Carter and Reagan. They were the last two American presidents, weren't they? Carter's stock has improved in American esteem since he left the presidential office. But yes. Reagan's has gone right down. He's now only marginally more uh, popular than Richard Nixon, <laughs> but still less popular than Black Death. Uh, 
poor guy. Cal Spritz, listen in. Can I stop you there for a second? OK. Your reception is very, very bad. Can we play a record and phone you back? Uh, yeah, OK. OK, and I'm sorry about that, but you are crackling ever such a lot, dear. Right. It must be your sexiness. It must be the electricity that you exude. Of course it is. I'll speak to you after this record, Ian. Okay. Bye-bye.